Hello and welcome back to the House of Valentina. I'm Valentina. Today we'll be going through several mistakes that people make in their homes, but also have very simple solutions because a lot of times we feel like we have to just throw the whole thing out and start over. And actually a lot of times, some of the things that you're feeling aren't quite right in your room are actually really easy fixes. So I hope you're gonna absolutely love today's video that you'll hit subscribe, wanna hang around for all the upcoming videos. But don't forget, if you want more today, you can also check out our interior design playlist. It is loaded with tips and tricks. We've got room makeovers, we've got trends to be looking out for and ones to be totally avoiding. So we've got lots for you there. And before I spill this coffee, I'm gonna set it down and we're gonna jump into today's video. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, mistake number one that is really common and it's actually a really easy fix, and that is to think about your materials. A lot of times you're out shopping, you're looking online, and you're not even paying attention. You just find something, well, at least I do, and I'm like, ah, oh my gosh, oh, I have to have it, I have to have it, oh, hit, you know, buy, buy, buy. <laughs> and uh, maybe you are a little bit more calculated, but sometimes you can't help it. You find something that you really love, and then you get it and you're like, maybe not the wisest material for me. I think that thinking through your materials is really important. Doing your research before you even buy something can really help you out in the long run. Think through, first of all, what is your actual lifestyle? Not what your dream life is, what you wish you did. Uh, think about what your life actually is, who you live with, if you have pets, what kind of visitors come, if you've got visitors that, you know, I don't know, they're out on a construction site and they come in and they're gonna sit down on your furniture you might wanna think about having a really durable fabric for people to sit on, maybe even leather. <laughs> but that's being a bit extreme. But realistically, you really do have to think about if you've got pets that might have muddy paws, if you've got kids, I think a lot of times also about if you sit down on leather and you might have buttons on the back of your pants, you gotta think through all of these things before you purchase rugs, purchase a sofa, even think about your dining room chairs. We had plastic chairs for absolutely years. And now that our kids are just a little bit older, we went with a performance fabric on our breakfast room chairs and the other ones are made of leather. So they're really easy to wipe down. I think you have to think through all of your materials for all the things that you're doing. It's a little bit less worrisome if you're gonna buy maybe a pillow off of H&M Home, and usually you can just take those covers off and throw them in the wash. But if you're gonna be investing a little bit more into, let's say, a custom pillow that's made for you, you may not want to have a velour, for example, that is dry clean only, especially if it's one you're gonna use all the time. And you like to sit on the couch and eat pizza and watch TV. I mean, we love too. We love to sit on the sofa and eat popcorn. And so when I bought a sofa for our family, I was looking for a performance fabric. So as you think through your purchases, look back and I think just learning from your mistakes is one of the biggest things that you can do. And just say, you know what, that's life. I've learned, but going forward, I'm going to make sure that the rugs are high performance. I'm going to look at the count. You can look at the rub count on the materials. Pottery Bar makes it really easy. I, I do like shopping there and my clients love it because you can see the rub count on the materials. You can see whether they're a performance fabric or not. Sometimes, if, for a long time, I even had oil cloth down over the cushions on my breakfast room chairs because it was a material that I could just wipe down when my kids were little. So think through all those things this is an easy one to avoid, and you may have to be thinking as you go forward about that material did not work out well for me. Next time, I'll be buying something different. A big mistake that a lot of people make, they get it wrong all the time, that is buying the wrong size art. Not just, a lot of times we talk about where they hang it, right? Not hanging it at eye level, hanging it too low, hanging it too high, but what about just the size itself? The size itself of your art does actually make a very big difference. Sometimes as an interior designer, I like to play around and I'll use a small piece of art in a way in an artistic expression of, of taking something off center and making it smaller. I think it's a great way of expressing yourself, but a lot of times people aren't necessarily expressing themselves. <laughs> sometimes they just, they just have something and they just stick it randomly in the middle of the wall. That, that typically doesn't really work. You have to really think about the space that it's filling. 
I tend, and a lot of designers tend, to think about a bed. A lot of times you want your art to fit within the framing of the bed, the, the bed frame itself. You'll want it to fit inside of that. Rather than having one that's itty bitty teeny weeny at the top, you want a nice big piece. Whether that's a combination of two things put together, it's one really big piece, it can be a big uh, tapestry, it could be one of those little uh, woven things. Whatever your style is, you have to really think through how is it going to feel when it's up on the wall in that space. A lot of times people just go too small in their art in general, and so it just feels completely lost. It just feels like it's just low and it's really easy to fix this one. If you don't want to spend a lot of money, you can buy your own canvases and paint your own art. I definitely do that quite a bit myself. I love to create my own art. I think it's just fun to do. It's something that I just enjoy, but a lot of people don't really like that. So if you want to go to the next level and you want to upgrade your art just a little bit, maybe you need to upsize it, you might want to also check out places like Amazon. Wayfair has some great options. Most of the time, those aren't going to be created by an artist themselves, but you might be able to find something that's big enough that can really fill out the space. And then of course, if you've got the budget, there's a lot of options. You can start upgrading, go to West Elm, go to Pottery Barn, go to Our House, and then you can also check out places like First Dibs, and there's a lot of designers who have websites who also sell really big pieces of art. And I know that the budget starts going up, but you can really get some beautiful pieces because ultimately, the problem with buying art that's too that's wrong size and doesn't feel quite right is that art is such an important statement in your entire design and it really makes you feel something when you walk into the room. It will either feel underwhelming, it will feel overwhelming, it will feel off. Art is very, it's a very powerful tool for a designer. And when you're DIYing, DI designing your space, you really wanna think through how that art, how it's gonna feel and the overall effect it's going to have. But I do think that you can think through if you have a corner or you've got a walkway, trying to put lots of little things on the wall is very busy. Over the years, I have found myself upsizing my art because it really fills the space, makes a big statement, and it doesn't feel lost or busy either. Because I think walking down a hallway with a million little pieces of art, I love that look on Pinterest, but in my real life, it makes me feel a little bit stressed. So understanding yourself, understanding what you like can really help you to figure out what kind of art is gonna be right for you and what size you should really be shopping for. Make sure you measure the wall and make sure you measure the furniture that it might be referencing and then go from there. One of the biggest mistakes that people make all the time is they forget low light. And I don't mean like dimmed light, I mean the lower room, this room that we sit in on this level. People forget that all the time. They get in the habit when they first move in of just flicking the overhead light on and they just forget to low light their rooms. And so when you go into the room at night, it's kind of, it can be glaring. It depends on whether the, the light is dim. Sometimes it's seedy because the light is, the overhead light's really dim and you can't really see what's going on or it's the opposite and they've got those daylight bulbs and you walk in in the, in the evening and you're just like, oh, it's just like so not nice. So I say low light the room. You don't wanna only use an overhead light for your space. Those low light, your table lamps and your floor lamps make a huge difference in your space. They really do. They can be very ambient, very warm and inviting. And I personally just absolutely love to shop for table lamps. You might already have some. A lot of times people even have them sitting in their garage. They have them sitting in a corner somewhere where they haven't even plugged them in. Uh, I find that actually all the time. You probably already have one. Just think about plugging it in. Use a, uh, a yellow toned light bulb rather than the daylight ones to really warm up your space. And um, if you don't have one, you can start at places like Amazon. We found some really great, really great lamps off of Amazon. And then of course, if you've got a little bit more to spend, you can check out places like Pottery Barn and Crate and Barrel. They've really come out with some really creative ones that are really beautiful. And then one of my favorite places to shop for lighting, if I've got a little bit more to go, is somewhere like Visual Comfort. That's a site that I go to all the time. If I'm just trying to get started and I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do, they really just have some great options and it can really help you low light your room. Okay, so now we talked about low light. Let's chat a little bit longer 
alert about those overhead lights. A lot of times people actually have the opposite problem. They don't want to use the overhead light. They recognize that it's dim, seedy, or overly bright. And so they add lamps to the lower portions of their rooms and they forget that they really do need overhead lights as well. So there are some great overhead light options out there and it will make a big difference in your space. If all you have is low light in your room, there's just gonna be vast ceiling or there's nothing up there. So of course, you could spend a lot more money and put some recessed lighting in. You could put in some art lights as well, like the actual ones that are in the ceiling. Those are really great. And when we're building or if we've got a little bit more money and a little bit more time, those are things that we will definitely add into a room. But if you're looking for a quick fix, it might be easier than you think to actually add some upper light. First of all, think about maybe switching out the light that you already have to something that's a little bit better suited for the space. You might wanna go for a statement chandelier that really just makes the space feel extra special, adds a lot of character into the room, and it's dimmable. I think having a dimmable chandelier in any space you're gonna be putting it into makes a huge difference. I put them all in dimmers because you really don't want them all completely lit, hardly ever, <laughs> unless you're gonna be doing a, a crossword puzzle or something that's super detail oriented uh, and you need to see minute things. Usually most people will have their chandeliers slightly dimmed. You can also think about some pendant lighting. Also think about some wall lights. You can add some wall sconces that just plug into the wall. If you wanna make it more permanent, of course, you can hardwire them in, but a simple solution is just to put a sconce up on the wall, and then if you've got the cord, just make it match the wall, and it'll visually just kinda of disappear. You can also think about some art lights over the lights that you already have, but you could also think about up lighting. If you've got bookshelves, we just bought these really inexpensive art lights that off of Amazon and they up light our art. Rather than going from the top down, we just go from the top of the bookcase up to the lights. This is an easy thing to do if you've got bookcases and things like that. You could have the ones that come up and over or you can also use up light. Another big thing, I, another big thing that's always probably, this is always the most shocking one to me, and maybe it's because as a designer, I like to spend my money on these things, but one of the things that a lot of times people forget to do is to accessorize their space. <laughs> people regularly forget to actually add accessories into their rooms, and I'm always confused because as a designer, I love to buy accessories. <laughs> None of my regular subscribers are like, really, you? <laughs> you guys are like, yeah, she does. <laughs> She loves the accessories. <laughs> it's so much fun to shop for them. I love to shop in all different places for accessories, so this one is very hard for me to understand. But accessorizing your space really adds a lot of character, it adds a lot of personality, and it helps to feel like it's actually a living space and gives your eye something to look at. So even if you're more minimalistic and you just wanna have a couple key accessories, I would suggest sizing up on those accessories. Have just a few things in the room, some larger books make a really big difference, some larger sculptural pieces. You can even have a big paper mache bowl. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to express yourself through your accessories. And I think a lot of times people don't trust themselves to buy things. I would suggest thinking about what style you really like, what goals you have in mind for the space. Think through, uh, think through things that really express you. Buying those books that really express your personal style are really important. But I think also having nice big ones makes a big difference. You don't want them to be too tiny because then, yeah, it just looks like you just have a lot of stuff in the room and it can be quite busy. But maybe you're a maximalist and that's the style that you like, so you don't even have to worry about it. Maybe you already have a bunch of stuff. But a lot of times people just don't know what to buy. I suggest che checking out places. CB2 is somewhere I go all the time for really great sculptural pieces. I love to look on places like Our House for vases. Pottery Barn, I run the gamut with them. I love to look at their bowls. I love to look at their baskets. And even places like West Elm offer a lot of different accessories, candles and candle holders. They can really just make your space feel really interesting and express your personal style. This is a big one and it's a hard one because a lot of times when I go into a space, I've noticed that somebody's bought the wrong size curtains and I always feel bad because I'm like, oh, it's like, a dress that's like the wrong length and it looks like you know there was a flood and they just kind of pulled it up yeah um, that's usually the one that gets me now I'm gonna laugh at myself a little bit because I like that pulled look of fabric so I tend to have longer curtains and I like that sort of casualness in a space where they're pulled at the floor 
So usually the biggest mistake is that people buy them when they're too short and then they don't want to return them. <laughs> just return them. <laughs> okay, just take them back. You've got the receipt. <laughs> take them back to the store. <laughs> Why do people keep things that are in the wrong size? I don't know. If they don't touch or skim the floor, they're probably not long enough. They're probably too short. You want them to just lightly tap the floor or be just above it. You can also have them pulling lightly on the floor, but you don't want a big mess to look like there was a flood of curtains and they're just all over the place. You don't want that either. But if you've got some tricky windows, you might want to think about maybe having them custom made. I, I think that people, a lot of times people think that it's going to be expensive, but it doesn't have to be. Places like the Shade Store offer really great options and you can have your curtains custom made for your space. But while we're talking about this, let's just go ahead and jump right into the next point, which is that a lot of times people don't want to do custom. But that's a big problem because sometimes you've got weird spaces and you need to do something custom for them. Sometimes you just can't buy the right thing off the rack. Think about your clothing. Sometimes you can buy something off the rack and you can have it shortened. You can have some tailoring done to it and you can make it work. But sometimes some pieces just aren't going to work and you can't find the right thing. You might need to custom order your sofa. That's something that I think is really important. I personally really believe in custom ordering those pieces. Every now and then you'll luck out and you'll find the right piece and you'll just be able to order it and it's the right one and it's in stock. I love it when that happens. Uh, but a lot of times you need to actually custom order your, your sofa. You need to measure out the space, decide what is the right size for your space and then custom order it with the right fabric on it. Gotta going back to the other one here. Sometimes things are just better when you custom, when you have them custom done. Having your stuff made custom doesn't mean that you're going to spend a fortune. Places like Pottery Barn and Our House and West Elm, they allow you to custom order your pieces and decide what fabric is going to go on it. I suggest that you look at those options and consider ordering the fabric samples, put all those together with things that you already have and make sure it's the right color before you order it in the wrong color. Uh, also make sure, check out the fabric too. If you have a cat and you've got a basket weave and your cat tends to kind of scratch on things, that may not be the best fabric for you. A lot of times cat owners like velvets because they say their catches, cats don't scratch them up as much. You have to think about your pet, <laughs> your home, what you really need. And sometimes if it's not on, ready to just grab off the rack, you're gonna need to custom order it. One final mistake that a lot of people make is that they only wanna buy trendy items. They wanna get on Instagram or TikTok. I, I, I don't personally get on TikTok very much. Uh, I, I think that a lot of times you can end up falling kind of down a rabbit hole on TikTok. So once you show interest in one thing, your algorithm is going to make, it's going to give you a lot more of it. So you might find yourself on trendy decor TikTok <laughs> and it's just quick little things and you're going to find things like glitter grout and you know, I don't even know, I don't even know stuff that's just kind of crazy and it's here today. It's gone within the hour. <laughs> it's not even here tomorrow. It's gone within the hour. Okay. It's instant you really don't want your home to be filled with those sort of instant trends because you're, you're gonna end up spending a lot more money constantly switching them out. I don't think you have to avoid all trends. I love to include some trends into my home, but when it comes down to the, the core pieces in our homes, what we try to show you on this channel are things that you're going to want at least five years, at least, hopefully 10, and ideally you'll even want them for a lifetime. And then occasionally you might mix something in that's a little bit more trendy, like adding a new cushion onto your sofa or a new throw, but the, the sofa itself is not one that you're just trying to get rid of after a week. That's not good, or even after the first year. So I try to avoid those little micro trends that just don't help you build out your home in a way that year after year, if you do it smart, some people have, I love it when my clients have enough money to do the whole room all at once. We design the whole space, they add all the cart and ba-boom, we get to do the whole thing, all of it's done. That's the ideal thing. So for many people, for many people, it's just not an option. And building your home over years 
is something that it just develops over time and you might add one main piece every year. So being wise and adding in things that will be lasting will help you build out your home and it'll cost you less over time. So there you go. Those are a few decorating mistakes that I think a lot of people make that are actually really easy to avoid. And a lot of times they're really easy to fix. So I hope you've loved today's video and you will want to hit subscribe, hit subscribe, become a subscriber, become part of the House of Valentina community. We just love you guys. You guys are awesome and I, I mean, check down in the comments. You're gonna see that people chit chat with each other. We have an amazing group of people, just such an enthusiast and I love it because then I get to hang out and chat with you guys about the stuff that I love. So make sure you hit subscribe, give the video a big thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments which one of these is like, oop, guilty, <laughs> or which one has cost you money and you wish you thought about before. Let me know that down in the comments. Otherwise, I'm gonna leave you with another video suggestion and I'll see you in the next one.